Welcome to my Tantric Winter Meditation Journey. So here we are again on step two of our Tantric Winter Meditation Journey. I hope you've been practicing what we did last week because I will be referencing a couple of those elements. Not exactly the same thing, but similar with tiny little differences because it is these differences I want you to become really familiar with. It is these differences, these tiny little movements that will change the power as well as the energy of each type of exercise, of each type of meditation that you do. So today's meditation, a lot of people think that it is uh, for peace of mind. Some people will say that it's actually for relieving stress. But in Tantra, we actually believe that this is the meditation that you do to remove that one thing, which is the root cause of all your blockages. It removes that one clash, that one poison that impedes every kind of success in your life. Success meaning anything from whether it's at work or it's in your studies or in your relationships, anything. This is the one thing that impedes it. I'm going to teach you the exercise first and then I'll explain. Now, as with last week, legs in this position, pelvis open, knees apart, heels together, hands Thumb at the base of your ring finger and then place your hands directly behind your heels. Straighten your arms and lean forward a little bit so that your weight is on your hands, back straight and your neck and head in line with your back. Except for one thing, tuck your chin in just a little bit. Not hugely, don't do this, just tuck it in a little bit. Okay, now the stomach. Hold the core in very, very tight. And when I say very tight, I mean that when you breathe now, you should be breathing up and down and not in and out. So strong core. And finally, the position of your eyes. Now in this meditation, the position of your eyes is very important. Your eyes should focus on a point which is four fingers in front of your nose, slightly looking downwards. Okay, but remember, not strong eyes, okay, not angry eyes, not wide open eyes, very, very soft focus eyes, just looking downwards, very soft focus. If you are more of an earth element person, looking down might make you feel very sleepy, in which case you actually move your eyes upwards. However, if you're able to manage looking down, that is the best place for your eyes to be. So in Tantra, we say that whatever position you put your outer body in, those are the channels of energy that will open up on the inside as well. Now, I know after last time, a lot of people wrote in and said, oh, you know, it's a bit cold. Can we lie in bed and do this particular meditation? Or can we wrap ourselves in a duvet or a rasai to stay warm? Well, I guess anything is possible, but we do believe that how you position your body impacts directly on the channels that open up on the inside. So I would suggest that you actually put yourself in the correct position and whatever channels of energy open up inside your body, that will impact your state of mind. That will decide how you think and feel on that day. However, here's the interesting thing. They say in Tantra that there is no direct internal connection between the channels of energy and the mind and that that connection has to be made through the eyes, which is why the positioning of the eyes, where you actually place your eyes and the disposition of the eyes, which means how strongly they depict an emotion is very, very important to your meditation. So whether your eyes are looking hard, whether they're looking angry, whether they're looking soft, will define how those channels of energy reach your mind. Finally, this movement of just tucking your chin in slightly, it's a very tiny movement. Again, in yoga, they say that this is what helps you to not get distracted. In Tantra, we say, however, that this little movement will break the circuit of energy, which means that now when you do this, your energy will start to flow downwards and outwards. So that is why we tuck the chin in on this particular meditation. So what is that one clash, that one poison that we are trying to expel from our body with this meditation? 
I guess the closest word for that in English is jealousy. Although I don't really like using that word because I think in English it has a very tiny meaning. It doesn't have a huge concept attached to it. In Sanskrit, however, it had a much wider meaning. It encompasses a lot more emotions and thoughts than that little limited idea that we have of jealousy. And in Tantra, we say that it is this one emotion, this one feeling of jealousy, which is the root cause. It is the primary blockage of anything that you choose to do. Even if you believe that it doesn't exist inside you, even if you believe that you have no jealousy, we are told that it always is present inside you. It exists in our subconscious. And this is the first thing that we actually have to get rid of. This is the first thing that we have to treat in order to go further. Now, once again, as I said last time, just because you do this particular meditation, it doesn't mean that your jealousy or your feelings of jealousy will disappear automatically. It's about becoming aware of something. The moment you become aware of it, you start to work on it. And that is half the battle won. This meditation is for first thing in the morning, before you start anything else, for six minutes. Now, I'm going to give you seven days to practice this exercise, to get used to this meditation, and to see for yourself what benefits you are getting from it. Remember to like, comment, subscribe. See you in the next one.